the Game of Thrones universe is back with House of Dragon, but there's been some time since Total War players got to enjoy this universe they know and love. The most famous GOT mod for the game, Seven Kingdoms, received its last update in 2019, which now is quite a while back. That's why I have the pleasure of introducing a new mod, one considered the successor to Seven Kingdoms, and one which not only wishes to improve on the mod with a host of updates and upgrades, but perhaps even in the future, modding innovations permitting, a Game of Thrones campaign map. And if that sounds good to you, and you want to know more, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video for future updates. Myself and this channel really does rely on your support, so if you enjoy what I do, then it would mean the world if you also consider supporting me further as a YouTube member or as a patron. Thanks guys! This is a game of ice and fire, an in-progress total overhaul mod for Total War Attila, and then overhaul of Seven Kingdoms itself. It's a mod that originally aimed to complete Seven Kingdoms and make it as best as it could be, but has since evolved into a much larger project, aiming to bring a whole new depth to the world of A Song of Ice and Fire. But how about we get to the fun part right away, and I'll give you the interesting details later, huh? A Game of Ice and Fire aims to make as realistic of a mod as possible, and that begins with the armies of the Great Houses themselves. In the Westerlands, House Lannister rules from Casterly Rock, and is the wealthiest house in the Seven Kingdoms due to their gold mines. You can see this wealth reflected in their armors. These units are absolutely beautiful, and these are the classics of course, represented through the Lannister Spearmen, Sporting Tower Shields, and the Swordsmen, wielding rounder ones, akin to the Heavy Cavalry itself. If you've played Seven Kingdoms, you might see much familiarity here as you might with every major faction, but a game of ice and fire adds detail and polish to each and every one of them, making for an even more realistic looking experience. I personally love the red and gold colors of the Lannisters, and I think they're reflected really well in this mod. In the north, House Stark rules as the Lords of Winterfell, and the harsher climate is well reflected in their armor's equipment. Here we have thick leather armor and other padding, but also heavy plate armor reigns supreme, and there are even those carrying greatswords. My personal favorite aspect of the Starks has to be their shields though, which look so extremely tasty, detailed, and just pop right out of the screen, even though they are just various shades of grey. From their seat at the Airy, House Arryn rules the Vale. Living up to the sigil, their units are truly beautiful, offering a mix of blue, white, and grey steel. Often extremely heavily armored, anyone meeting them in open fields should be wary, as Arryn soldiers are loyal to the last. Of course, we also have the other great houses here, like House Baratheon, Martell, Tully, Tyrell, and Greyjoy. There's even a Baratheon faction based on King's Landing, which differs in army composition from the normal House Baratheon itself. But even more than that, A Game of Ice and Fire has plans for making a faction for a number of lesser houses as well. This means the Boltons, the Karstarks, Blackwoods, Dondarrion, Frey, and so many more, making this mod deeper than ever. Other than the factions themselves, our heroes are back, but this time in a very different form. A Game of Ice and Fire now introduces single entity commanders, meaning your Neds and your Jamies will all be controlled separately from a bodyguard. 
The aim here is to create a commander unit which is more powerful than a regular one, but still one which is nowhere near as magical as those of Warhammer games. So think something like the generals in Medieval 2. They'll take a punch, but if you're not careful, they'll die just as easily. The models themselves are just as impressive looking, and I think my favorite remains Ned Stark, whose model reflects his features really well. And now let's get into the meat of things. A Game of Ice and Fire's immediate aims is to bring a more polished, more balanced experience than Seven Kingdoms could ever offer, and this is achieved through several steps. The first, as we know, the updating of unit models across the board, and the introduction of completely new houses. Second is balancing, where a major overhaul is coming. The idea is to put realism front and center, having armor actually mean something. And the same goes for various types of armor, shields, weapons, and how they deal with incoming attacks, meaning knowing what type of unit may counter another is intuitive and fun. Next up is the UI, also receiving a facelift. The most important factor here might just be the updated unit cards, which are being remade to a card. Notice how they're all implementing a stylistic profile aspect, matching the theme of each house. It all just really oozes passion and I love the hand-drawn approach here. Gameplay-wise, the mod will have two options. In Seven Kingdoms, each faction was divided into regions, not houses, and in battle, units would have their houses show above them, not the actual unit type. In a game of Ice and Fire, the intention is to have two versions, the one in Seven Kingdoms, but also the traditional one, meaning that we now pick houses instead of regions, and units will once again be known by their unit type in battle, just like in vanilla games. Then we have the concept of optimization. Modding is a time-consuming process spanning years, and so over time, things can get bloated and filing systems may get out of control. To make things easier for developers and even for sub-modders in the future, every model and texture has been renamed, refiled, and reorganized to make them easier to find and change. Old and unused models have been removed, and new LODs have been made, allowing for better optimization in large-scale battles. In addition, there are currently no custom maps ready to be shown off, but after release, a game of Ice and Fire is aiming to bring not only custom maps, but historical-like battles where you get to face the same challenges as the characters from the books and show, including the likes of Battle of the Bastards, Battle for the Wall, Robert's Rebellion, and more. It must be remembered that this is only an early version of a game of Ice and Fire, and the mod will not be released for some time. And yet, as we've seen, there is already so much here, so much passion and refinement and beauty. I absolutely love how these armies look, as if taken right out of the show, and when considering what the future holds, custom battles with unique challenges, and perhaps even a campaign app on the horizon if modding tools for it become available, a game of ice and fire is shaping up to be your quintessential Game of Thrones mod. If this video has piqued your interest, make sure to join the team's Discord server, especially if you're interested in offering help and becoming part of the team, or for more information. Thank you so much for watching. I'm certain a game of ice and fire has a bright future ahead, and I can't wait to see how the mod turns out. Let me know what you think of the mod so far, and if you enjoyed the video, I really hope you leave a like, a comment, and sub to the channel. And again, if you enjoy what I do, it will mean the world if you consider becoming a YouTube member or a patron. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.